Good morning. I would like to welcome everyone to worship. I am Pastor Maggie Westby, and so grateful to be worshiping with all of you who are here today and with those of you watching online. Welcome. I invite you now to settle in, to notice your breath, and to center yourself with our Creator and with one another by hearing these words from Psalm 139. O oh God, you have searched me and known me. You discern my thoughts from far away. Even before a word is on my tongue, as you know me completely. Please stand as you are able. Let us read the call to worship responsively. O oh, mortal, can these bones live? O oh, people, place your hope in Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us bring our confession to God so that what is hidden in us may become visible, so that the shadows of our hearts may be illumined by God's grace. Eternal God, you call us to trust in you completely, but we do not. We are timid and fearful as we follow your lead. We justify our actions and words. We struggle to understand the new life Christ offers, preferring bad habits too risky to change. Forgive us, we pray. Bring your life-giving grace into our bones. Weave our sinews with Christ's strength and fill us with the breath of the Holy Spirit that we may embody your love and share your goodness with all of creation. Amen. O oh, dry bones, hear the word of God. Jesus Christ dwells in you and the Spirit of God showers you with grace and mercy. God who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. This is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, all your sins are forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you are the resurrection and life. As we worship you this day, show us who we are, bearers of good news and messengers of your love. Breathe upon us the power of your spirit. Inspire us, guide us, and comfort us. In Christ we pray. Amen. I invite you to sing our opening hymn, This Is My Father's World, number 824.
Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Reading from Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to, those, to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 130 responsively. Out of the depths I cry to you, O God, hear me. May you be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you should number the times we stray from you, who could face you? Yet you are ever ready to forgive that we may be healed. I wait for you, my soul waits, and your word is my hope. My soul waits for God more than those who keep watch for the morning. Wait for God, for with God there is steadfast love. With God you will know mercy and love in abundance. For God will forgive all your sins and is your Redeemer. Amen. Please stand as you are able to welcome the gospel. Turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to John. We have another long gospel reading today, so you may be seated. Also, the proper gospel reading today is found in your insert, so if you would like to follow along, please refer to that. Here is the gospel reading from John chapter 11. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, Though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, 
After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not seen in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to and met him, and while Mary stayed at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard up, she got up quickly and went to them. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary and got, get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, He was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of a blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, 
come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Any children can come forward. Good morning. How are you doing today? Good. So have you ever heard of the phrase called, you got this? Has anyone ever said that to you? Yeah? What does that mean to you? Oh, that is a, that is a good phrase. Yes, that is one way of taking it. That you, got, you got this, a present from someone or something from someone. When adults usually say that to each other, they are meaning like they're giving you a thumbs up or a high five, that they're cheering you on, that you are about to do something that might be really hard, maybe like take a test, learn how to ride a bike, you know, different things that are really hard. And we're trying to say that you got this. And it's a way of saying that you can do something really cool, right? So there are some times in life when life is just too hard. Maybe you tried really hard to ride your bike and you keep falling down and you can't get on your bike or you're trying to get through your homework and it's just really hard. There are times like that when you just don't think you got this and that makes us feel kind of sad. Have you guys felt sad before when you can't get something done? Yeah. Well, in our reading today, it was very long, we heard that Jesus cried and that Jesus was really, really sad which shows us that Jesus can enter into places when you feel sad. So if you don't got something, who has it? Jesus. Jesus has it, and so Jesus also has you. So I like to say that God has got this, because God has each one of you, and God holds you in God's love. Is that pretty cool? So when it's hard for you to do something, and you don't think you can do it, who do you rely on? Yes, Jesus. That's awesome. Should we give thanks for that? All right, let's fold our hands and pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Help us to love others and let them know that you got this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. You all did really good. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, my strength and my joy. Amen. A thick smoke filled the sky, choking out the sun. The clouds, if there were any, could not be spotted. The air was heavy and stale, smelling of rancid smoke. With gray and white pieces of ash floating down, Filling the lawns with specks so delicate and fine, it looked like snow, precariously balancing on the tops of the blades of grass. The days dragged on like this, and if you were to venture outside, your eyes would immediately burn, and breathing would become labored. I was living in Vancouver, Washington, when smoke from forest fires surrounded the city for weeks, as a strange weather front kept the smoke from escaping, creating a space that had the worst air quality in the world. A place so dry and desolate that if the smoke would have persisted for years, I imagine it would have reflected the valley of dry bones that Ezekiel foretold. As the valley of dry bones was so dry, it could not have happened overnight. To become this dry and parched and crumpled, it would take years. A transition that many people can relate to. 
even if you have never experienced smoke-filled days from fires. As most humans, especially those of us living in America, endure something equally dangerous that takes years to compound, burnout, and fatigue. Because when we do not even realize how worn out we are until we crumble. And when we finally do crumble, we find ourselves dried out and at a loss for words. And then there are the opposite, yet equally traumatizing moments in life when words are not enough. The moments when in an instant, your world is turned upside down. A horrific car accident, a terminal diagnosis, the death of a loved one. The moments of life-shattering grief, a moment that is so fresh it hurts deeply and immediately, tearing into your world like a bolt of lightning too hard to ignore. Moments that even Jesus experienced, as we heard in our moving gospel today with Lazarus's death, when Jesus entered the very human experience of what it means to lose a loved one. A moment that forever changed God. As we heard that Jesus became deeply disturbed, Illustrating that God is capable of experiencing emotions just like you. Revealing that God is not some place out there, but God is a part of you. Because it is in our bodies, in our breath, and in our tears where we are deeply connected to God. As I shared in my very first service here, the original Hebrew word for God was made up of syllables that sound like our breath. The sound we make when we breathe in, followed by the sound we make when we breathe out. Further, the Hebrew word for breath is ruach. And ruach has a much more expansive meaning than breath. It means breath, life, and spirit. Spirit referring to both your spirit and the Holy Spirit. Showing how intricate breath truly is and how each breath is weaved into God's very existence. Which is something we were able to see in the valley of dry bones. When God weaves sinew and flesh on them when God breathed life into them and filled them with the Spirit of God. However, the valley stayed dry. God did not alter the landscape, but God was present in the dryness, and God brought life into dryness, leading them out of the valley and back home to their promised land. And God continues to be faithful in that way for you. As God breathes with you, inviting you into life in your exhausted bones. God breathes with you in the deepest valleys, even when there is no immediate way out. Because God knows what it is like to be in those places. For God lived in the flesh and body of Jesus Christ, where Christ experienced pain and loss, not so that he could eradicate them from our world, but so that he could be present with us in our hard times. Which is why I think Jesus stayed for two days before going to meet Lazarus. Jesus was grieving, and he needed that space. Because life is hard sometimes, and it is difficult to face the things that bring us pain. And for many of you, this hits very close to home, as there have been a lot of deaths recently in this community. Losses of loved ones whose imprint has left a hole 
in your life, impacting the way you live, how you move, and how you breathe. And as much as I hope and pray to walk alongside of you, to find the right words, to provide comfort, and the good news that comes from God, I know that I will fall short. That these are the times when words are not enough. And Christ knows this too. As we heard in our gospel, when Christ was deeply moved, he did not use words. He began to weep. Not to eliminate our grief, but to meet us in our grief. As our tears unite with Christ's tears. Where Christ grieves not only for the loss of Lazarus, but for the loss of all of your loved ones. Providing you a space to be held in God's embrace and to breathe with the Spirit of God. The Spirit breathes new life in you so that you can find the strength to move forward, even if the strength is subtle. As we tread step by step or inch by inch into the world, as we cling to the promise that Christ is the resurrection and the life, and that death no longer has the final word. And yet, this does not eliminate your pain, especially when you find yourself in a dark tomb like Lazarus, when you hear your name being called to get up, but it is too hard to move because your arms and your feet feel bound. And it does not eliminate your exhaustion when your sinews are stretched and your bones are aching. And yet God is there too. God may not immediately transform the valley around you, but God can transform the breath inside of you. Because God is intricately intertwined into every sinew, every breath, and every tear. God is there calling your name, to take your hand and to lead you, to be with you when you are weak and worn, to hold space for you when words are not enough, to lead you on this path of life through dry valleys, storms, and strife till you meet God in resurrected life. But until then, God is with you, breath by breath, and step by step, as God knows the very intricacies of your very being, because God has got you. Holding space for your tears, your fears, and your joys, God has got you and holds you in God's love. Amen. I invite you now to sing our hymn of the day, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, number 773.
please stand as you are able. Let us profess the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation, responding to God of grace with hear our prayer. Creator God, we give thanks for all of your creation, from the driest deserts to lush rainforests. May all creatures thrive, may all find proper nourishment and resources that they need, and may we become better stewards of your creation. God of grace, Eternal God, we pray for all who were impacted by the tornado in Mississippi and Alabama. For all who lost loved ones, provide them comfort and a place to grieve in your being. For all who lost homes, provide them resources and transitional housing. God of grace. Loving God, you redeem the world and its peoples. Free us from systems of oppression. Unbind nations and societies from hate and violence. Rise up leaders at all levels of government who work to promote the dignity of every human life. God of grace. God of our weary years. God of our silent tears. You weep when we weep. Be present with those who grieve. Deliver us from the depths of our despair and free us from the worries that bind us. God of grace. Mothering God, you hear us when we call to you. You meet us where we are at. You hold space for us in your very being. May we find comfort in this truth, and may we share your good news with others. God of grace. Healing God, send your comfort, care, and peace to all who are sick. Today we especially pray for Peggy Orvez, Pat Plunkett, Thea Heil, and Carol Fitzke. May your healing spirit reach them all where it is needed and bring them into fullness of life you desire for each of them. God of grace. Nurturing God, we pray for all members of St. John. May you meet each member and all who pass through our doors in ways that are life-giving and filled with your peace. Today we specifically pray for this week's prayer ministry. Maxwell Noss, Zach Trulin, Brian Anderson, Aline Hovey, Dwayne Miller, Dan Dietert, Morgan Bowles, Braxton Borth, Ray Gallenberg, Veronica Levake, Briella Grunenberg, and Selena San. May each of them feel your loving presence today and all days. God of grace, we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share the peace however you feel comfortable. We continue now with our offering, and we acknowledge that without the breath of God, we are dry bones, and without the word of God, we are dust. With gratitude, let us offer our lives to the creator of all life.
Let us pray. Gracious God, receive these and all of our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your word. We thank you for rising us up and joining us together as your people, flesh and bone, in the body of Christ. As you have delivered us from death, use our lives to proclaim the good news of life in Christ. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh In the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray how Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Since we no longer have pre-packaged communion, if you cannot make your way to the front, I will bring communion to you in your seat. And um, for those of you wishing to partake in continuous communion, we will do so by forming one line where you'll receive the bread from me and then go to your corresponding sides for the juice. There are gluten-free wafers available upon request. Now is the time for you to come and receive Jesus, our strength and our life in the driest of valleys. All are welcome to the table. I invite the communion assistants to come forward.
Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and care for the world with your love in our hearts. Amen. There are quite a few announcements. Um, tomorrow we will have the book club and it will meet at 6.30. We'll be discussing if God is love, don't be a jerk. And all are invited to come even if you did not read the book. The family of Pat Paisky would like to thank everyone who has helped and was a part of the cele Pat celebration of life and also to thank you for your continued prayers and support. And I also sent out an email because I'm wondering if there is an interest in an adult study that will focus on Lutheranism and the roots of our faith. If you are interested, please let me know. Next Sunday is St. John's annual Easter egg hunt following worship, and all children are welcome. And this coming Saturday will be our first communion education class. Easter Sunday, we are having an 8 a.m. and a 10.30 a.m. worship service allowing for an Easter brunch to be served at 9 a.m. All are welcome for the brunch, but we ask that you sign up in the narthex so we know how much food to prepare. And April newsletters are also available in the narthex. Are there any other announcements? Then please stand as you are able to receive the blessing. May the Creator wake your flesh with life anew. May Christ weave strength and courage into your bones. May the Holy Spirit breathe joy in your presence. May the three in one deliver you from dryness in parched places. And may the Holy God triune saturate you with hope, renewal, and peace. Amen. Let us sing our sending song, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine, number 774. Go in peace, serve in love. Thanks be to God.